from Penn State Health and Penn State Children's Hospital. Welcome to Ask Us Anything About Safe Infant Sleep. I'm Scott Gilbert. Each year in the United States, there are 3,500 infant deaths due to sleep-related injuries. And we're here to talk with Amy Bollinger of the Pediatric Trauma and Injury Prevention Program here at Penn State Children's Hospital about how you can keep your infant safe while sleeping. Amy, thanks so much for being here today. Um, let's start with the ABCs of safe sleeping. There, there's an acronym that's very simple, very important. Tell us what A, B, and C stand for. Sure. So ABC stands for alone, back, and crib. Alone meaning that your infant should be alone in his or her own sleep space. Back means that you place your baby on his or her back to go to sleep. And crib meaning that your baby should sleep in a crib with nothing else in that crib but your baby. So let's go through each of those very briefly. The first one is alone, and that means they are sleeping alone in their crib and not in mom and dad's bed. Correct. We know that, in, that over half of all sudden unexpected deaths due to suffocation involve co-sleeping with a parent. Okay, so co-sleeping under any circumstance is acceptable or not? The American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend bed sharing for the risk of suffocation. Now, we did have a, a comment on our Facebook page from someone who said that they are very scared of having their child in their bed for that very reason. You know, but she mentioned, the only time my son is in my bed is in the morning when we're both awake. That's probably okay. That's okay. If the parent or caregiver is awake and able to watch the baby, that's fine. That's safe. Yeah, but also, leaving a child on the bed, is even if the child is awake, a bad idea they could roll off? They absolutely can, and they do. We see that very often in our pediatric trauma program. Parents, well-meaning, lay their baby on the bed, in the middle of the bed, step out of the room, and come back to find their baby on the floor. You're watching Ask Us Anything About Safe Infant Sleep from Penn State Health. I'm Scott Gilbert along with Amy Bollinger. We welcome your questions. Just add a comment here to this Facebook post and whether you're watching this video live or on playback, we'll make sure we get some answers for you. We're talking about the ABCs of safe sleep. Putting your child down alone is the A. B is on their back in the crib. So why is that so important? Because I got to be honest, I think way back when I was in a crib, I slept on my stomach and not that I remember. So did I. In fact, when I had my own children, my mom reminded me of that every time she babysat. And we all survived it. So what's the big deal? We did survive it. But as time has evolved, so have studies. And we know differently now. Babies, all of us, have two tubes in the backs of our throats. One's a breathing tube, and one is a tube for food and drink. When a baby lies down on his or her back, he, the, the food and drink tube is on the back, mm -hmm. and the breathing tube is up. So if a baby spits up, that spit up is going to come up and go back and wash right down into the food and drink tube, not the breathing tube. Whereas if they're on their stomach, something different happens. It's reversed. So the breathing tube is now at the lowest, lowest point on the crib, and the food and drink tube is on the upper, upper portion. So when they spit up, anything that backwashes is going right into that breathing tube. And we have a diagram. In fact, I'm going to hold this up so you if Mike can get a shot of it. Uh, we will also put a copy of this diagram on the uh, Facebook post for this particular video so you can kind of get a, a diagram because it, it, it does sound unusual. Everyone's afraid that their baby is going to choke on their own, their, own, their own vomit when, in fact, that's not really a risk if they're on their back. It is if they're on their stomach. So that runs kind of counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. It really is. So we talk about alone on their back, and then the third one, of course, is in a crib. Tell me about what that crib should be like and look like. Right. So we talk about a sleep space in injury prevention because a crib could mean a few different things. Many families cannot afford a three and four hundred dollar crib. So a portable crib, such as a pack and play, is perfectly safe for your baby to sleep in as long as you are using a fitted sheet designed for that portable crib. Mm -hmm. In the crib, there should be nothing, no bumper pads, no loose fluffy blankets, no stuffed animals, nothing. They are all very high risk for suffocation and what we call entrapment. Sometimes what we hear is when it comes to the crib bumper, so the, the, it goes along the outer edge there, because you see these slats in a crib, someone may say, well, what if my child's arm could easily slip through or a leg could slip through and get stuck? They're young. They might not be able to get it out. That crib bumper could prevent that. Well, that's... That's not necessarily true. Bumper pads were first designed when slats of cribs were much wider, and they were designed 
20, 30, 40 years ago so that babies' heads would not get stuck between the slats. Now that the slats are closer together, the risk of having a head and strangulation is is mitigated. We don't see that anymore. It is not likely that a baby will get his or her arm or leg stuck in between those slats and not be able to move them out himself or herself. Yeah, sure. We welcome your questions for Amy Bollinger of the Pediatric Trauma and Injury Prevention Program here at Penn State Children's Hospital. We're in the safety center of the Children's Hospital. It may look familiar to some uh, patients and families here. And uh, we do welcome your questions on safe infant sleep. Just add them to the comment field uh, below this post. We're talking about putting baby to sleep in a nice, safe crib. And as you mentioned, that means free of a lot of items. But th there are a lot of things you can buy, a lot of accessories you can buy for a crib that would seem to enhance the safety. One of them might be a, a wedge-shaped device that you can put the baby up uh, next to to keep them from rolling over uh, onto their stomach. Sure. And again, you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics says they are absolutely not safe. They, are, they put your baby at an increased risk of suffocation. And that's really what we're talking about. I mean, all of these risks seem to go back to that one individual factor, suffocation. They do. Sudden, unexpected infant death is not completely preventable. There are, unfortunately, babies and families who have to go through a devastating loss, such as an infant death. But there are factors and things that we can do to prevent the suffocation and strangulation piece of the umbrella term of sudden, unexpected infant death. Right, to prevent at least some of them to prevent at least some of them, right? No parent puts something in his or her baby's crib with the intent of doing harm. So we want to be sure that we're educating moms and dads and grandparents and aunts and uncles about what the right thing is to do, the safest thing is to do for your baby. And there are some factors that uh, go beyond the crib. One of those is smoking in the household. That's been shown to increase the risk of sudden infant death, correct? It really has. Pregnant women who smoke during their pregnancy, have a th their babies have a three times higher incidence of sudden un unexpected infant death as compared to moms who don't smoke during pregnancy. This is very information, uh, very important information here on Ask Us Anything About Safe Infant Sleep. And for that reason, we ask you to share this Facebook post on your feed so we can help to get the word out. And of course, we do welcome your questions as well here for Amy Bollinger. We're talking about some of the myths. Any other myths or anything we didn't touch on there that, that sometimes come up when, you know, kind of anything we want to set the record straight on to make sure people have, like you said, the most current information, which admittedly is evolving. Sure. One of the things that we recommend also is that infants not sleep unsupervised in any kind of sitting devices, a car seat, a high chair, anything that, that puts the baby in a, in a sitting or reclining position because babies move around and they can get themselves stuck in a position where they cannot protect their airway. And, you know, that's an interesting factor because we had a colicky baby in our house, and right. the only way she'd fall asleep in the middle of the night was if we drive her around. <laughs> and that's you right. know what happens that's if right. you take her out of the car seat that's after right. that drive, she's going to wake up. That's right. But bottom line, that's not safe. Now, specifically when we talk about the car seat, why is that not safe? Because babies can scooch down and actually get their necks hung up on the straps themselves. And if if that happens and the caregivers are asleep, they have no way of, of saving or protecting their infant. I suddenly feel guilty, but we, know, we lucked I out. Know. But there are a lot of these things that it's true, like you say, that these factors may not be a problem. You might get away with them. The problem is you might not, and that's why it's important to keep the ABCs in mind. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you told me about something else interestingly before the interview about um, some binkies that have, uh, is it binkies that have stuffed pacifiers. animals on them? Yeah. Pacifiers. We call them pacifiers. Okay. All right. In yeah. hospitals, you That's know. That's right. Well, and, and so this one doesn't have a stuffed animal, but they actually make those now where they have stuffed animals on the end of them? So I don't know what the official term is for the pacifiers that have the stuffed animals. I'm a little old at this point, but there are apparently stuffed animals that attach to a pacifier. Those stuffed animals can actually, are actually large enough that they can completely cover an infant's nose and mouth, which can lead to airway compromise and eventually suffocation. So we don't recommend those in the crib. And so you know, we, we think about these things as something that would comfort the child when, in fact, they could actually put them in harm. Um, so how old should a child be then before you can introduce things such as maybe an extra blanket or stuffed animals? At, at what age or size is it okay to do that? We say not under one year. 
a minimum of one year and even longer um, in the sleep space. There are very rare instances where infants are suffocated or strangled by blankets that get wrapped around the rails of the crib and then around their, their heads and necks. Very, very rare, but we see it. And um, so we recommend absolutely nothing in that crib under the age of one year. No need to take chances, right? Right. Well, we thank you for watching, and we do welcome your questions. Again, even if you're watching this video on playback, if there's something we didn't touch on, feel free to add it to the question and comment field there, and we'll make sure we get that question to Amy Bollinger. She's manager of the Pediatric Trauma and Injury Prevention Program here at Penn State Children's Hospital. Amy, thank you for your time, and thank you for watching. Ask us anything about safe infant sleep from Penn State Health.